The third Doctor kicks off 2024 with Revolution in Space, Jonathan Morris's second six-parter of the year. Yes, he done Fugitive of the Daleks for the first Doctor back in January. And then in February, he gave us this uh, third part of a trilogy, he calls it, including Colony in Space and Frontier in Space. Because, you know, with the third Doctor... There's a lot of in spaces going on, isn't there? It's very much part of that era's titling. And so here we've sort of forgotten about Conspiracy in Space from Third Doctor Adventures Volume 8. If you want to hear why it's forgettable, that review is there. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But here we are with Sarah now. And this is rather nice because we've had a lot of Earthbound stuff recently uh since the relaunch we've had a uh, kaleidoscope with sarah with liz we've had both the annihilators and intelligence for war so when it comes to these longer stories that are now doing with this new format uh, of frida's box sets we've yet to have a six-parter in space and so this is that and i do love my earthbound stuff I yeah. prefer my Earthbound stuff, but it's nice to mix it up every once in a while. Well, uh, season 11 was the season that started to sort of drift away from Earth. Um, so this is where we, we kept to see Big Finish's take on that, um, which I think for the most part, I enjoyed it. It's very authentic, almost to a fault. For the wrong reasons, like you can hear the CSO. This is the budget story of the season. This is your mutants mixed with Colony in Space, mixed with Planet of Spiders. It was there with Mullins, I would say. It was with, like, Tommy, yeah. Yeah, although a bit more of a uh, evil Tommy. Um, I mean, you've also got a Mullins in uh, Spearhead from Space, funnily enough. That is true, yeah. Yeah, it's an uh, error authentic name, is our old Mullins. Yeah, you can certainly see some monster Peladon. Yeah. But yeah, certainly yeah. in what you'd imagine a design of this to look like in the caves. Mm. Uh, and on top of that, funnily enough, probably the most uh, out of left field's influence on this is Robots of Death. Yes. But mainly the opening, because there is a sequence here of the third Doctor and Sarah in an induction tunnel, uh, which is very <laughs> reminiscent of... It's almost beat for beat, they, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. How the fourth Doctor and Leela arrive on the Sandminer in the one of the scoops, really. I mean, that's where the comparisons end. There's no robots here or anything. No. Uh, but it is a rather nice homage at the start there. Because it's such a great sequence. And it works well in both of these stories. Yeah. But then after that, we're into much more of a third Doctor story. I did quite have quite a good time with this one. It doesn't quite overstay its welcome, despite being a six-parter. A lot of the parts are... They're hovering around the 25-minute mark, so it's very close to what it would have been at the time. And mm. I think that helps quite a bit, because sometimes when you have these 30-minute, 35-minute parts, you're at risk of it dragging a bit. But I yeah. think this, it's quite a pacey six-parter, this one. See, for me... I think it's a it's a slow burner. It takes two episodes for it to finally start gearing up and going. And I think with this, it'd probably be a tighter four parter. Um, and I it's it's I enjoy listening to it, but at the same time, I don't feel like a lot happens in the parts for me. Like I know I'm listening to a six parter, but I'm still enjoying it. It's a strange yeah. one. It's sort of the same way of when you watch those six parters though from the era. Yeah. There is a fair bit of repetition in capture and escape, which you get going on here. But at the same time, there is always little ways that the plots are advanced. You certainly go through quite a few different um, leaders of the colony throughout this as the revolution uh, continues and then more revolutions happen. And then you've got your main villain uh, played by Juliet Walbury here. Uh, up to some shenanigans in the background. And I think that's where this excels, is the blend of the more human conflict with the revolution going on and the more universe-ending conflict with this BDO, as it's called, uh, the strange crystal that you see on the cover, the big dumb object, which is seemingly giving people 
mental powers uh, mm. undreamed of. Uh, yeah, which I quite like how those two plots come together because when you look at something like Colony in Space, which is a story I very much enjoy, and I particularly love the uh, colonists versus IMC and that struggle. But then when you throw the master in and the doomsday weapon, it sort of doesn't quite gel with what the rest of the story's doing. Hmm. Uh, whereas here, I think that balance is struck far better. How about you? How did you feel that all came together? I think it, it, it does what Colony set out to achieve better. Mm -hmm. I prefer Colony as a story, because I, I think this story becomes a bit cliche with the resolution with sort of this sort of psychic battle and i think that's where the story kind of starts to unravel a bit yeah the climax of this one didn't do a whole lot for me i was very much enjoying it up until that point i think parts one to four in particular part five rocked the boat a little bit and then part six i was like "Ooh, i don't quite know if i like what this is doing hmm uh, but I think there's some amazing characters throughout this. Governor Rogan, played by Richard James. Yes. Given a brilliant, yeah, brilliant performance. And such a wonderful character as well. And I think he makes the most of those lines. Yeah, it reminds me very much of the Ice Warriors with Clint, played by Peter Barkworth, who's, you know, got a stick because, you know, he's not got an awful lot to do on screen so he's got to make the most of it and make it, your eyes be drawn to him Richard James has a, <coughs> a bit of going on just to make sure that you know he's got a little little bit of a character work he's got a very there. juicy voice isn't he he was very sort of rich <laughs> very, yeah, very plump yeah which yeah, very he's fits got one of those governor yeah. character well you know you can imagine sort of a, you know chin yeah or a bit like um, the Marshal in The Mutant. Yes, yeah, He yeah. gives off that vibe of a, a bit of a large... man. Yeah. Yeah, he's very much the one who is uh, making the most of his wealth. Yes. And, yeah, I think there's a particularly wonderful scene of him in the prison cell. Uh, and they're about to, to escape. Yeah. How that all plays out. I think, yeah, he's... A very strong character, very strong performance as well. But... Julie Aubrey is the main villain, Silo Kalstein. Another strong one. Yes, there's some of the sort of uh, silky, smooth, sort of venomous quality to her. But there's yeah. some, this, this nice sort of controlling, but she's taking her time with every word she says. And you're hanging on every last breath what she's going to say because she's in total control of the situation. I think particularly while she's locked up in the prison uh, behind this very thick glass it's described as. And for whatever reason, I just imagined it being frosted. Mm. Like you can actually see her face behind there. You could see a figure was how I was imagining it, but you could never actually see her face. I guess a bit like the Monster was... Paladin with the Ice Warrior reveal, I would say. Yeah. And that, for me, was when she was at her most terrifying, yeah. when she was in the prison cell. So, yeah, she is a wonderful character, wonderful villain to have here. But the star of a show, Sadie Miller. Oh, certainly, I would say. This yeah, is, this but... puts Sarah front and centre. Um, she's very much the, the reason the story, you know, gets resolved. Um, because yeah, she there's... plays a pivotal role in this that the Doctor didn't quite realise it was Sarah behind it. There's a wonderful scene that mirrors um, a scene that the Doctor and Joe have mm. uh, from the Time Monster. Yes. But instead it's Sarah here, and it's wonderful to have Sarah's approach to that, and it sort of yes. highlights how different the characters are in some ways as well. So yeah, it's a very strong story for... Uh, Sarah Jane Smith. Uh, I think it's got a lot going for it, but it could have been a bit better at the same time. I don't I think, think it it's, falters in certain parts. It's not the best season 11 uh, story Big Finish have done. No, no, no. But I think that it's authentic for, like you say, for probably all the wrong reasons. Like you can imagine. And the right ones as well. Yeah. I think, like, yeah. 
as if, as you could expect, the music hmm. um, in this by Nicholas Briggs is very Dudley Simpson. It yeah. very much fits the era. Uh, but yeah, it's also got some other shortcomings that you sort of expect as a way of padding out a six-parter. Like you say, it does feel like almost more of the budget episode. Yeah, it's a studio-bound one, really, I'd say. it's. Yeah, and it comes with all the pros and cons of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's possibly the most authentic story they've done. Yeah. I'd say. Cause so... you, can, you can hear the wire work for it. You know, the CSO is in full audio glare it's yeah it's yeah. great yeah it's one that's arguably not making the most of the fact that it's on audio i yeah. suppose is another way of putting it yeah yeah. If you want to be a bit harsher on it but i don't i don't necessarily think that's a bad thing i think no, sometimes no, no, no. it's fine to have a story that does rein itself in a bit more you know because we do have so many others that get to go all out so why not you know, have a bit more of an introspective one, I suppose. Yeah, if you want a, a, a I guess, an authentic slice of a Pertwee six-parter, this is it, you know? Yeah. Kaleidoscope, though it's a season 11 six-parter. It's very it's, 70s. It's 70s. But at the same time, it's going above and beyond what Doctor Who would have been able to do at that time. It's three separate stories in its own right. Yeah. This is pure, unadulterated... 70s Doctor Who. Yeah. Warts and all. Yeah. And, I mean, there's something to be praised about that. And at the same time, something to be criticised as well, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And I think it will very much be take it or leave it for some people. Mm -hmm. But I can't say I regret picking this one up. I can't say I didn't have a good time with it. So... Yeah, overall, I think it's a 7.5 out of 10. I'd agree with that rating. I'd agree. I'd agree with that. Yeah. Let us know what you thought of Revolution in Space down in the comments below. If you've liked what we've had to say about it, leave a like uh, and subscribe for more because there's a lot more for Dr. Box sets, a lot more Big Finish box sets, Big Finish releases in general we've that we've either whole... talked about or yeah. have yet to talk about. So. We've got a whole catalogue to be explored. Um, and like we say, we're going to try and review every relaunch box set this year. Yeah, um, there's another third Doctor one due out in October. Yes. So, you know, stay tuned for uh, what we make of that one. Mm -hmm. We'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.